right, good evening everybody. It is Wednesday evening. Uh, kind of a cool night down here in the shop. You see I got the heater on. So I just want to tell you what I got going on. i uh, tell you about this upcoming video. We've been doing some plant more cleaning and painting on Steven's engine. Starting with that. Running into a little trouble with one of the head studs. This is a large stud. Uh, 10 millimeter case. And one of those studs. The very last one. One out of 16. Uh, pulled out. So I had to order some case savers. And we'll get that fixed. Probably show you that in the next video. already been through the torque sequence numerous times. I walked them down from 18 to 20 and 25 and on to 30. So you hear me talk about my trusty dial wrench. I always keep going back to it. I want to tell you again, you, you heard me say it in, in previous videos. This is my go-to wrench. I watched my daddy build a million, million engines with this wrench right here. If it's good enough for him, it's good enough for me. I'll talk them with that clip wrench, but I'll always double check this dial wrench. Okay, so one thing I want to show you that I've already done this morning, uh, I kind of wanted to be focused on what I was doing more than focused on video in it. Uh, don't like to make mistakes, and sometimes see, it's very easy to get distracted. So what I wanted to show you, uh -oh. I went ahead and cleaned the push rods. Uh, they were real nasty. I was using them for lineup tools, but I went ahead and took them and cleaned them real good and got them nice and shiny. I don't know if you can see them. Maybe you can see them up in there. So I cleaned the push rods, put the rocker arms on, got everything torqued down. I then I went and confirmed number one cylinder on the compression stroke. Now, when I was in this, the, I, I didn't build the bottom end of this engine, but when I was in it earlier, looking, looking, you know, changing things around, cleaning things up, I looked at the location of the distributor drive gear. Uh, now everybody has their own about this. I think it's one tooth off. So if you look right here, look at where your rotary button's pointed. Uh, it'll be pointed to where number one spark plug wire goes, but I like it to be pointed back towards number one cylinder. So it, it's okay right there where it's at. Uh, I can work with that. You notice on the degree wheel, it set it top dead center. I looked, made sure the piston was up, and I set number one cylinder. I set. Uh, each each uh, rocker arm intake and exhaust at six thousandths. Then, and everybody has a different way of doing it, 
This is just the way I was taught to do it. I rotated it 180 degrees backwards till bottom dead center come up. Then I set number two. Rotated 180 degrees, set number three, rotated 180 degrees, and set number four. Now I'm sure there's other ways. I've, I've heard of other ways and seen other ways done, but this is just the way I was, I was taught. So now we are, we're back to cleaning parts again. We've got everything, everything that we had cleaned up and painted, everything's ready to go on. Uh, so now I'm gonna go get some more sand and spend a little time cleaning up the fan shroud and the heater boxes. I want, I want the heater boxes to look really good. I want to make sure they're serviceable, make sure they're not rusted out. Uh, so we'll be showing that a little bit later on today. All right, so we're getting ready to start sandblasting these heater tubes. I just wanted to show you what they look like after we pressure wash them. One thing you want to look at on these things, make sure they're not rusted out. So as, as air blows through these things from the fan, if it rusted out, it's not gonna blow. It's gonna blow the heat out everywhere. It's not gonna blow it out where you want it. So these seem to be in pretty good shape. Uh, both of them really do. We're just gonna get them sandblasted and cleaned up. But one thing I did want you to did want to show you right here. Look like somebody's done some repair work right here on the exhaust flange. We'll have to address that somehow. May try to weld it up, build it up, or something. Projects like this are all about the detail. You can shortcut them here and there and be, you know, that's up to you, it's your project. I don't do that. Something else. I see a lot of people glue these gaskets in. I've never done that. I always make sure everything's good and clean. Fit the gasket in there. Put it up there the way it's supposed to be. snap it in place. Of course, that looks bad right there. I have to touch that up. I don't know what in the world I was thinking right there. Skin that to the bone. <coughs> Something else I want to do tonight. We spent the weekend cleaning up the heater boxes. And they turned out really well. I painted them with some POR high temp paint. The same paint that we used on Shane's truck for his exhaust manifolds. So I think they turned out really good. They look so much better than just being rusty bare metal. And actually these parts are in pretty good shape. Paint might be might still be wet in places. Tell you, there's nothing more exciting to me than to be able to bolt on some nice, clean, shiny parts.
Honestly, I've been waiting all day to put these parts on. Got a 13 millimeter ratchet wrench that would work right here, but I don't. Probably upstairs in the other toolbox. One thing I wish we'd have done on this engine, and we didn't, was got a new hardware kit. I, I did look last night, they're about 30 bucks for a complete kit. Comes with all the sheet metal screws, all the case bolts, everything you need on the engine build. Would have really made it look nice. Of course, I think it looks pretty good as it is. If I hadn't skinned the paint up right there, that burnt. What are we gonna do? I'm pretty proud of that. That turned out really good. Like I say, that looks much better than just a rusty old heater box. All right, so that's gonna wind up this video. Uh, I'd like to thank you all for joining. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. Again, please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, don't forget, we'll be at the Chattanooga World of Wheels this weekend. If you see us, please holler at us.